Alrighty, we are um, at a place in our study of uh, Exodus <clears throat> where tonight I'm going to be able to lay out <clears throat> some stages that are going to be very important in the next class because that's when I'm going to really start getting into some of the good stuff. But to do that, I have to lay forth, I have to set a progression forth to you tonight. And I'm hoping that, <clears throat> that anybody that's away in Ireland or Michigan or wherever people are, that they'll get this class first because it'll really, really help um, to understand what we're talking about. All right, so um, uh, the title of this class is exchange, The Exchanging of the Firstborn in Three Stages. The Exchanging of the Firstborn in Three Stages. <clears throat> and um, we have, last class, we spent time looking at um, the firstborn of Egypt and why that took place and their death. And we looked at the firstborn of Israel, and we discussed the important points of why that took place, because they were redeemed. <clears throat> and um, so we want to we want to go back to that first, and then we want to move on from that. Um, so <clears throat> the f the first thing to understand is that during the Passover. God claimed the right or claimed the firstborn as his own. Now that is, we've discussed that, we've said that, but you need to fix that <clears throat> in, in your spirit because <clears throat> within that is a spiritual eternal stand that God took from that time to this day, okay? That God claimed the firstborn as his own. All right, so it starts, it starts with, and it starts in the Passover, and that's why we've been taking the time to go into the Passover, because <clears throat> There's all the things of the, the lamb dying and, and, and eating the lamb and putting the blood on the doorpost and all those things. There's all of that. But one of the things, and we've discussed this too, that has been skipped and, and gone over is that this thing about the firstborn and this, this uh, statement that I made that the Lord said and has affirmed it throughout all the scriptures and throughout all time, even to this day, is that he claims the firstborn as his own. Okay, <clears throat> so that's, this, this is stage one that we're talking about. Um, and when I'm talking about stages here, I'm talking about, and you'll see what I mean when I get to stage two, we're talking about there's an exchanging an exchanging going on of who is the firstborn. That's what the whole class, both of them tonight, are going to be. There's an exchanging of who the firstborn is going to be. All right. So on stage one, <clears throat> um, let's see. How, how many of you remember how many stages I said there is already? Three, yeah, three, yeah, all right. <clears throat> so um, so the firstborn is, which we have discussed here, they, they are set aside, they are consecrated, they belong to the Lord. They're set aside for the Lord, they're consecrated to the Lord. <clears throat> all right, so Exodus 13, if you'll turn there with me, and most of our scriptures tonight will be in Exodus 13, except there are some there that we'll get into in Numbers. Exodus 13, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> and we've read this in prior classes, but this, this was the very beginning of God declaring that the firstborn was his. So here it is, 13, 1 and 2. The Lord said to Moses, 
Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the Israelites of human beings and animals is mine, is mine. <clears throat> all right. So um, when something belongs to the Lord, you don't want to mess with it. It doesn't belong to you. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the first thing to realize on this. All right. All right, so be under that, which we have discussed too, but I just want to set this up as stage one. Um, so I wrote, still under stage one, the next thing to remember is that the firstborn are God's. They belong to him. They are his for sacrifice. So from this point on, when, when the Lord said that, that he said, uh, let my firstborn, even my firstborn son go, he wasn't talking about a bunch of Israelites. He was talking about his firstborn son. Okay. And, um, and he was calling that son, and you remember that he said, let him go, come to me. So this is the father sp fa speaking because he's talking about his firstborn son. I, you have him in you because they ate the lamb. But I want him to be let go out of you that he may come to me and serve me by sacrifice. You remember that? And feasting. Okay. So, well, good. They all ate the lamb. But he's saying, I want you to let my son, my firstborn son, go that he may come to me out of Egypt and sacrifice. <clears throat> so... The firstborn son belongs to God, and it belongs to God to be sacrificed. All right. So um, uh, let me read this. Now, when a firstborn son is born, they are to be given to God for death in sacrifice. <clears throat> All right. So does this remind you of anybody, the firstborn Jesus? All firstborn belong to God for sacrifice. This includes the saved firstborn males among Israel, as well as animals and the first fruits of the harvest. All of it is called firstborn to him. All of it represents, um, represents the firstborn. And it shows that God's commitment to that will be carried or especially in the Old Testament, I mean, you know, obviously in the New Testament, all the way to the book of Malachi where God has a problem with the Levites and part of the problem is they're not giving him the first fruits, the firstborn. So what are they doing since that's what they were called to do? <clears throat> um, they were saved from uh, Egyptians, um, so the firstborn of Israel, not the, not the Egyptians that died, their firstborn, but the firstborn of Israel was saved from Egyptian firstborn death. In other words, their firstborn, Israel's firstborn, dying in Egypt by the death angel. They were saved from that. That they might be sacrificed to God. Okay, so... Um, I don't think I have it in these notes right here, but as I was meditating even today on this, I thought they, the firstborn, could have died in Egypt, right? Could have died in Egypt. If they didn't eat the lamb and put its blood as a token, remember it said it was a token. That was the word it used. It's a token of what happened on the inside. Lamb entering in, the blood. The blood, again, the blood wasn't magic. The blood was a token of the slain lamb, but not just that, but that slain lamb had been put inside because God said, do this and he shall pass over. He didn't just say put the blood on there. He said the blood of the lamb that you ate. Isn't that an interesting language? So that's the token. I know that the ones in this house are full of lamb, <laughs> if you could put it that way. They have eaten the lamb. All right. So he passed over. <clears throat> so, um, 
So they were saved from death angel death so that they could be sacrificed to God. So that they could be sacrificed to God. This is going to take longer than I thought it was. <laughs> um, all right. So they were saved from, here i got these two little tables up here. They were saved from death angel death in Egypt so that they might be sacrificed uh, and enter a death that has purpose and meaning and eternality with it, which is being crucified with Christ. Okay? So they didn't, they didn't get saved from death in Egypt so that they would be saved from death. So like, I can live and be free, and that's part of the problem. From then on in the wilderness, you just see them living and being free, complaining, wanting this and that, and not in tune with the Lord at all. So, um, uh, they were brought. They were bought from death, angel death, by the precious blood of the Lamb. Now that we say that, but remember, it's the precious blood of the Lamb. They should have died, but now they will be given in a death that is worth something, having deep spiritual meaning. All right. So this is in type and shadow of. Jesus is, Jesus is the firstborn in his death on the cross. But it lets us know, and this whole study that we're in right now is going to let us know that this lamb thing inside of us is a huge part. It's what Passover is because, remember, the next Passovers that started coming, they didn't put blood on the doorposts. They certainly didn't do it in the wilderness because they didn't have any doorposts. But there's almost no record of the blood being mentioned after that. Every Passover, no blood. It's all about eating the lamb. Interesting or not? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, uh, Exodus uh, 13, 11, and, uh, 11 through, well, I've got 11 through 12 here. Verses 11 through 16. When the Lord has brought you into the land of the Canaanites as he swore to you and your ancestors and has given it to you, you shall set apart the Lord, to the Lord all that first opens the womb, all the firstborn of your livestock that are males shall be the Lord's. All right? So he's again setting forth this reality that the firstborn is his. All right, let's go to Exodus 22, verse 29. Exodus 22. You shall not delay to make offerings from the fullness of your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. The firstborn of your sons you shall give me. Notice that every time it mentions you shall give me livestock and you shall give me the, the firstborn of your presses, all of that is a sacrifice. All of that is sacrifice. That's the first fruit offerings. Anybody ever heard of that before? The offering of the first fruit? That's what that is, okay? So, uh, Exodus uh, 34, 19, and 20. I may only have 19 down here. Exodus 34, 19. All that first opens the womb is mine. All your male livestock, the firstborn of a cow and sheep. So we are seeing that all of this stuff is sacrificial. All of it is sacrificial. All of it is given to the Lord in sacrifice. All right. So, and what we're going to find as we keep studying this through is that God doesn't have anything given to him that's not given in sacrifice. That, I mean, that's where, at least where we as a church got the idea or at least followed through with the idea of, of um, um, dedicating your children to the Lord. Dedicating your children to the Lord. Doing it in a sacrificial way. Not just the child, but also the parents and everything. You remember that. I mean, it's been a while since I've done one of those. But yeah, you know, that's the, that was the spirit behind it. It had sacrifice in relationship to it. And not just, you know, bless my baby. <laughs> bless my kids. Um, all right, so now we're going to get into numbers. Um, and let's
let's see. Yeah, we'll probably go back to Exodus in a little bit. Numbers 313. Jeff, how close am I to? Okay, well, that's a good amount of time. Numbers 313. Because all the firstborn are mine, for on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mine shall they be. I am the Lord. Is he serious? <laughs> all right. Um, and I want you to notice that the eternal point that he always points back to is the Passover. When he smote the firstborn of Egypt, from that point on, the firstborn, he said, it's mine. Okay? It's going to be mine. So you can say it like this. When he, when he, um, when he, he killed the firstborn of Egypt, but he saved the firstborn of Israel, he said, that, get ready. That which I say belongs to me in sacrifice. Okay, remember that we said two groups came out of Egypt that day. And we saw it clearly in the scriptures. One was the children of Israel and the other were the firstborn. The children of Israel were delivered, but the firstborn were redeemed by death. Y'all remember that? Because that's going to come up a lot, and actually it's been through some of this that we're already discussing. I'm just not pointing it out yet. Um, so when, when you see that, you realize, oh my God, it wasn't just a big bunch of people coming out uh, saved. Only the firstborn were saved from death. The death angel wasn't going to kill everybody. Only the firstborn were saved from death. And what God saves, he expects to be able to sacrifice it. He expects it to be sacrificed to him. All right. Stage two. Maybe I should read this so I can make the timing here. All right. So, so stage one, well, let's... Let's see if, who can remember stage one and part A and B. Raise your hand. Okay, we just discussed. Pardon? That's part A, okay. And part B is they belong to him for sacrifice. All right. So there will be a test. All right. Um, so this is stage two now. However, things progressed to another level in stage two. In this stage, the God who redeemed them from the death angel death in Egypt now redeems the same ones from firstborn de death. Okay, so here's the reason why, and we'll get, really get into this next week. He redeems them from the death that they should give to God in sacrifice because they had nothing of the spirit of that lamb that was on the inside of them. Look, just look at the wilderness experience. You can see that. Do I have one minute left? <laughs> yeah, I just I set it off the top of my head. So. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. The, so when they came out, when the firstborn came out, they were supposed to come to the father as the son and live in sacrifice but they didn't they murmured and everything and so the whole wilderness thing was an abomination to him as far as the firstborn so in stage two once we come back in 20 in just a few minutes in stage two we're going to see that since the firstborn, the original ones that were considered the firstborn in Egypt that he's redeemed through the death of the lamb didn't live according to the lamb when that was in them, he's going to change that. He's going to change it from them to something else. And each stage is going to be a change from the original to something else. That didn't work to something else. Okay. 
You with it? Because this is going to be great when we get into it next week. All right, let's take a break.